You may well think that there can't be many good things to come out of the current corona crisis, but I can tell you now, you're wrong. Like most people, I've been vividly watching the news, and having watched it relentlessly over the last two months, I think we can rejoice. I think we can rejoice because it appears that this virus has eradicated all war, famine and pestilence. Well, all other pestilences anyway. Three out of the four horsemen of the apocalypse have been eliminated in just two months. There's only death left, but then Jesus did say that death would be the last enemy to be defeated. So we can rejoice, we can celebrate at this new dawn. Except, of course, it's not true, there isn't one. The wars in Syria, Libya and the Yemen continue. Equally, famine conditions prevail in parts of Nigeria, in southern Sudan, Somalia and again in the Yemen. There hasn't been any kind of corona dividend. And for all that we feel we're suffering, we're not all in it together, certainly not globally. But even in our own country, whilst many of us, myself included, have enjoyed being able to sit out in the sun, largely guilt-free, there are those for whom this time is causing enormous financial hardship. Many currently furloughed are wondering if they will still have jobs to go back to. But far worse than the financial cost is the personal one. Agencies involved with domestic abuse are concerned that there's been a substantial reduction in calls from the vulnerable. That might mean that being cooped up together has given everybody a chance to sort out their relationships and their differences. But that's very unlikely. It's far more likely that people are trapped in abusive relationships and households, unable to make those calls and to get the help that they so urgently need. And very little of this is actually being reported, as our eyes are turned so firmly inwards, as we become so focused on our own cares and concerns. Here in Mobley, you might have seen those wonderful photographs Ailsa has been taking of people and families around the village. It's been really good, not least having the opportunity to put names to faces. On the one hand, so many things are being revealed, Yet also, as I've already said, so much more is being hidden. Yet one thing we can both trust and know is that nothing is hidden from God. Last Thursday was Ascension Day, when Christians celebrate Jesus ascending to his Father in heaven 40 days after his resurrection. It's a day when we live with the glorious tension of trusting in a Jesus who departed from us, in order that he might be with us always. However, I don't want us to think about the Christ who is always with us so much as to think of a Jesus who is always with God. A man who suffered the worst that this world has to offer, hunger and thirst, rejection and betrayal, false accusations and imprisonment, torture, humiliation, crucifixion, and an agonising slow death. And it is this man who sits at the right hand of God, who is bound up in the closest and most intimate relationship with God, who is bound to him by the bonds of the Holy Spirit. In that relationship we can be assured that God knows all that Jesus knows. God has experienced all that Jesus experienced. God the Father, therefore, has not just a full knowledge of the human condition, but an authentic experience of the human condition. In the ascension of Jesus, we have the assurance beyond any that could be needed that God understands our lives and our living. And from this flow two basic things. Firstly, we know that we can turn to him with all our fears, our regrets, our anger, our needs, and he, understanding us better than anyone else, loves us and will receive us. But secondly, and perhaps somewhat unfashionably these days, we know also that God is our judge. 
There is nothing hidden from him. There is no secret that will not be known, no sin that will not be uncovered. And those who think now that they act in darkness will find that their deeds will be revealed and they will face justice in this world or the next. Please pray at this time for those whose hunger and thirst, whose grief and pain, whose humiliation and degradation lie hidden. Pray that they may find courage, strength, consolation, and the assurance that they are not alone, and one day their suffering will end, and justice will be served. Amen.